people tend to be a little bit more generous. And if you, if you understand what we're trying to achieve here, which is to raise as much money as possible to make a difference, then it's, it's been a good, a good window for us. Oh, it's phenomenal. And proceeds from the book as well, we should have said, are also going to charity to earn to charities. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's something we're, we're both passionate about. And, um, you know, we're trying to get this centre built in Leeds, in Rob's name, um, as soon as possible. So uh, proceeds from the book will go towards that. And uh, we're representing five different charities this time when we run. So we'll keep banging the drum. You keep banging. It's great to have you all here. Thanks so much, all of you, for coming in. Rob, Lindsay, Kev, brilliant to see you. And we look forward to the 1st of December. <sighs> not long, is it? It's not long. <laughs> Get a few more blocks of running. In. <laughs> Thank great you. Great to see you. Thank you. Uh, now, it is uh, arguably the greatest work of British literature. The what, first... their book? Absolutely, yes. Certainly and... one of them. At the second, the second <laughs> is the first folio of Shakespeare's plays, which was published 400 years ago today. This very day, yeah. And to celebrate the anniversary, copies of the publication are going on display in theatres all over the country. And in one place, Prescott in northwest of England, it's not just making, marking a pivotal cultural moment, but also a transformation via Shakespeare of the town itself, as our arts correspondent David Sillitoe will tell us. Welcome to Prescott, nestled between St Helens and Liverpool. And this is, well, the last time I was here, it was the Red Lion. It's now? The Mermaid Tavern in Prescott. Now, it wasn't the Mermaid Tavern the last time I was here. It wasn't, it was a Red Lion. So why has it changed? It's changed. The Mermaid Tavern um, is actually a place where Shakespeare used to drink. What used to be Greg's is now Mercutio's, named after the character from Romeo and Juliet. This has become the Bard. The old mill is now the stage door. And yes, that is Shakespeare again looking down on us. This is the uh, Lord Strange, and so far we've been to the Mermaid, Mercutio's, the stage door, the Bard. Um, add it all together and what do you get? Well, it's an awful lot of Shakespeare. And this is the cause of this Shakespearean makeover, in what used to be a town famous for making clocks, watches and cables. Shakespeare North, a recreation of a theatre from the 1600s. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. And when people walk in here, does it have an impact? Absolutely. Yeah, I think when people step in the door, what people would speak to afterwards in the bar, they just said, it's just amazing. We've got monitors in the dressing room and every night we see people coming in taking photos of the theatre. I have never ever seen that in no. any other theatre. No. no one does that. So they come in here. Yeah. Whoa, look at this. Poop, poop, the, poop, they're walking poop, around poop. taking pictures of the theatre. Oh, here we go. Here it is. This is... The folio. And on this 400th anniversary, it's one of the hosts of a rare copy of an original Shakespeare first folio. The best and most beautiful folio. You're honoured. We really are. But this isn't a heritage project. Prescott sits in the third most deprived borough in England, and this theatre has both an economic and a cultural mission. The people on stage are the people who are in the audience who are engaging with us. They look like us, they sound like us. And that's really important in making these human stories translate into an audience today. Be it so she will not hear before you. For Tia, playing here both Aegeus and Wall in Midsummer Night's Dream, this was her first big break after an open audition in her home, Newcastle. Now I Want by better in Geordie. Yeah. <laughs> Everything sounds better in Geordie, yeah. <laughs> in which the fearful lover. Now forgive me, I mean you're not from a posh background, are you? No, not at all. <laughs> um, no, I'm um, from um like council flat kid, um raised by a single mom, very proud of all that. But yeah, that's my background. So when I went into acting, um it is harder if you're um you know, if you're not from a uh, kind of a middle-class background, I think, for sure. So Shakespeare didn't mean a lot to you when you were growing up? Not when I was growing up, no. I wasn't, I wasn't exposed to Shakespeare. So my first real hit of, of Shakespeare was when I got the part. I remember when I, when I first got it, you know, it's like, it was like Googling every word and, and making sure you knew what it was you were saying. Um, but once you get it, you, you get it, I think. He has my love and what is mine 
my love show went ahead. I was just in my element. I've never been um, able to to be on a on a stage like that. You, once you're in it, it's just the, it's the best feeling. It really is. And that question about what Shakespeare should sound like is fascinating. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou'rt more lovely and more Ben Crystal is an expert in Shakespeare's own accent. May and summer's less hath all too short a date. OK, give me a couple of Shakespearean quotes from the different accents. So there's the, the posh one you would have taught it. If this be error and upon me proved, I never writ, nor no man ever loved. So proved and loved, they don't rhyme. Shakespeare would have done it. Uh, in original pronunciation, if this be error and upon me proved, I never writ, nor no man ere loved. The rhyme, the rhyme works when you get the accent right. Mm. Um, doing it in a northern accent, doing it in a west country accent, doing it in a Norfolk accent. I think it, it, it brings something. Absolutely. One of the greatest things about this theatre is that you're going to hear the accents of Liverpool and all the city regions, Manchester and Lancashire. That's what this place is about, isn't it? A hundred percent. Absolutely. You, you can pay very little to be here and where you can hear a sound that's familiar to you rather than is distant from you. It's the, the sound of the many rather than the few. I think you're getting as close as we can possibly get to Shakespeare without use of a TARDIS. So, on this 400th anniversary, a moment of recognition for a town and a theatre deeply invested in the work and legacy of William Shakespeare. David Siletto, BBC News, Prescott. Cheers to them. Cheers to them, yeah, and uh, over to Carol. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it's just every time, every time we look over there and it's just a, it's just a rainy, miserable view behind you, Carol. Like, <laughs> that sounded really rude, didn't it? I'm just going to row it back now. And over, over to Carol with the weather. That was really good, Sarah. Let's move. And Craig, morning both. They've been pals for more than 35 years. They don't look 35 they to don't. me. Stuart says Craig has done loads for him, driving 200 miles to drop off a spare key when he locked his inside the car. Now, that's, that's a friendship. friend. That's a friend. <laughs> and he also takes in cake. That's even better, isn't it? And who's this? This is Nisha and Liza, who've been best friends for nearly 50 years. Uh, Liza says they're very lucky to have each other. They're clearly keeping each other young, aren't they? They really are, and that weather sort of matches Carol's weather shot a moment, does go, doesn't it? Uh, a nice frosty, Absolutely glorious. misty morning. So keep those coming. Get in touch in the usual way. We'd love to see your pictures and hear more about your friends, and we'll share some of those a bit later in the programme and on our social media channels. You are watching BBC Breakfast. It is 8.59.